Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex, and today we're finally gonna talk about the underdogs of modern orchestral music, woodwinds. Now, I call them the underdogs because in today's very popular style of, you know, larger than life orchestration, like Hans Zimmer or To Set From Hell, they are not that much used anymore, you know, the woodwinds instruments. And that's a bit of a shame because they can bring something interesting to the table. So we're going to talk about that in today's tutorial. What we're going to use as an example is my Sonic the Hedgehog cover, which you might have listened to by now because I already made a tour about this cover. Uh, and if you missed it, I'm going to link in the description of this video. But let's talk about woodwinds. Now, I, I waited a long time to make a tutorial about this because I only like to make tutorials about stuff that I have at least a decent understanding of. And since I haven't used woodwinds a lot in the past, I mean, I did, but not too much to gain a grasp of it. I waited. So now that I've wrote this cover, I've used woodwinds a bit. I think I can finally start talking about them. But I surely will make another tutorial about woodwinds in the future when I learn more advanced things. Because you can do so much with woodwinds and I just, you know, I just discover the surface right now. So let's talk about the surface. Basically, let's talk about why it's difficult to write for woodwinds for us as a first thing. So... The problem, as I said before, is that they're not that much used in today's orchestration. So maybe the, the artists we listen to, they don't use woodwinds a lot. And that is, that can be, that is a huge problem because that deprives you of uh, ideas that you can take inspiration from. You know, if we, like, when we write music, we don't reinvent the wheel. We take all different inspiration from our head and we concretize them into something new. But when you compose a song, it's not like you, like, all the ideas are original. You're actually... Uh, you know, subconsciously stealing ideas from here, here and there and mixing them together. So what you need to do to get, uh, you know, to, when, whenever, whenever you want to learn a new instrument, you know, want to learn to write for a new instrument, is you need to hunt for music that really uses that instrument. So a few recommendations for music that uses woodwinds in a great way is uh, listen to Japanese soundtracks. And I mean, seriously, like J Japanese composers write music, write music, in a very different way. So if you, for example, listen to a track called uh, The Pledge of Chaos from Final Fantasy XIII 2, you're going to hear a full orchestra with choir and everything. And it also has woodwinds. And the woodwinds there create an insane amount of tension and color. So that can be a great example. Another good example is uh, One Winged Angel, the arrangement version from Final Fantasy Advent Children Complete. So that's the movie version of One Winged Angel. It has the full orchestra, again, the woodwinds, and also guitars. So that's a crazy instrumentation. And the way it, it works, it's incredible. So you can, get, like it make, can make you inspired about woodwinds and many things. And if you want to, to have a Western reference for woodwinds, then listen to John Powell's Dragon, uh, sorry, John Powell's How to Train Your Dragon uh, score, like the first one, which is one of my favorites of all time. The use of woodwinds there is amazing. And also brass, pretty great stuff. So... First thing you might want to do is to listen to music that uses a lot of that instrument, music that uses a lot of woodwinds. Another example that comes to mind is my, my friend Anse Rosman. He's a composer who works with Hans Zimmer now, and uh, he uh, is known to compose beautiful pieces for flute and woodwinds. So if you look for Anse Rosman on YouTube, you're going to find his compositions. I use woodwinds a lot. So that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing you want to do whenever introducing yourself to a new breed of instrument, new instrument family, is to ask yourself how that instrument family works. So woodwinds, what are they? They are these instruments that you play by blowing into them, right? So that, that they fall into a category which I call breath instruments. I'm not sure if that's the right term for that. But that means that whenever you write for woodwinds, you don't want to like, write infinitely long sustained notes. You want to have breaks in between sometimes. Like if, if, you, if you have a sustain line, like for example, the one I have here. Let me actually isolate. You see, I introduce pauses sometimes, you know? It's not na 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 No, you have that pause in between. Uh, that is partly because of style and partly because I don't want to write sustain strings, legato, sorry, sustain lines or legato lines that are too long because an instrument that is play, played with your breath requires you to have stamina to play it, right? And you cannot play that, you know, 30 seconds or one minute long lines without running out of breath. This is something I talked about and referenced in the tutorial, how to write for epic brass or epic brass basics. 
which, uh, you know, many of the techniques I explained for brass and for strings to apply to woodwinds as well. So if you checked out the tutorial about brass and strings, you might have a bit of idea of what I'm talking about already. But if you haven't checked out those tutorials, I highly recommend you to go and check out those tutorials too because they're, they're, they're very informative. So the first thing you might want to do is avoid writing infinitely long lines, you know? It's okay to write them long like, like some that we have here, but sometimes add in breaks because that is going to recreate the, set, the, um, the feeling of a woodwind player catching breath, you know, pausing to catch breath. And that is very important, you know, because what we want to avoid, like the, what we want to do when we are composing orchestral music, the first thing we want to do is to recreate the sense that the illusion that what the people are hearing in our, in our songs uh, is being played live, right, by a real orchestra. That's when, when, when if you want to, your track to sound professional, you need to recreate that realism in the most amount of ways possible. And this is a good way to do that. So avoid infinitely long lines. This is true for woodwinds and true for brass, true for choir as well, because choir too requires you to breathe. So yeah, that. The second thing you may want to ask yourself whenever discovering a new instrument family is asking yourself, what are the instruments in this family? What is their register? And what can I do with them? So as far as I know, like, there are a very amount of woodwinds. I'm going to go from the lowest to the highest in terms of register and you know, frequency range and stuff like that. And there's many versions of them, but I'm going to just refer to the main ones. So you have contrabassoons, which are the lowest. I don't have them open here, but they are super low. Then you have the bassoons, which are this. Like you can go high with them if you want, but they sound way more believable. And way more in their element when you play around this mid-range. Then you have the clarinet. Again, it can go higher, but it, sound more, it sounds more in its element when played in the mids too. Now, compared with the bassoons, the clarinet don't have that sort of low end, the stern like sound like that. So they're more soft and I found them more emotional. I don't know, they have I don't know, a very melancholic sound. So that they can create that sort of color, like emotional and, and sad, just by their natural sound. So that you can use them for the meter for that. Then you have the oboe. In this case, if you go higher, it's still in its element. It still, it still retains its natural sound. So I would use it for the mid to high notes, you know, mid to high register. Then you have the flute, which is quite high. With the flute, if you go to as high as C8, you still, it still retains its nature, its sound, because this is, it's, it's a sharp a woodwind instrument. So I would use the flute from, you know, for, for the high to like, even in the mids if you want. I think the flute is the, more, is the most versatile. So you can use it for, for the mid register, but also for the very high, it stands out. And then you have the piccolo, which is the highest of them all, and it goes something like this. And it's like, it's the sharpest instrument, I think, in the orchestra. Probably the trumpets go so high as well, but the piccolo is just insane. And it, it works very well, like it, it cuts through the mix very well. Now all the woodwinds cut through the mix pretty well, especially the high ones, like the bassoons and clarinet, a bit, not too much, but the oboe, flute and piccolo, they cut through. The reason for it is a bit nerdy. I'm going to try to explain it to you. Maybe I'm going to make another tutorial about it because it's such a deep subject, but it's about fundamentals and harmonics. So basically the woodwinds uh, given their natural sound, they sound way more sharp and way more precise because of their frequency response. Now, to explain you that, I'm going to use the piano as an example. Have you ever played a C, um, a C chord on a very low uh, piano range? Like this? If, we play, like, if you check out the frequency spectrum for this, it's like, you know, super wide. But if we play the same chord on a higher range, 
Sorry, that wasn't the same chord. You see, the frequency range is more precise and the sound is more clean than this. If I go higher, it's even cleaner. This happens because when you have instruments that play at a low range, and the piano plays at the full range, it's the fullest uh, range instrument. So we can use the piano as an example. When you play at a low range, like let's play a low C note. What you get is the fundamental plus a lot of leftover frequencies that do not necessarily belong to the note you just played. Those leftover frequencies, they are the harmonics. And the fundamental is instead the note that really belongs to the C note that you're playing. So what we're hearing is the fundamental plus all the different harmonics. And it sounds very warm and very full because we are hearing a bit of the frequencies that belong to other notes as well. Because the string of the piano that is resonating with this note is thicker, so it has that you know, fuller sound. While when you go high, the string is thinner, so the, fun the, the sound is more precise, it's like this. And you see it, it's not, it doesn't have lower, all of those leftover frequencies, it's very precise. What you see is, you know, this, which is the fundamental, and then a few repetitions of the fundamental, they are harmonics too. But they really belong to C, way more than all of these leftover frequencies belong to C. So when we play a high note, and this is true for every instrument, when you play a high note, you tend to only really hear that note without hearing lots of harmonics from other notes. So it's the purest C you can get. That is why when I play a chord on a very high range on piano or on another instrument, it sounds way more precise because what we're hearing is the sum of, of the, you know, the different harmonics that really belong to C, E, and G. Well, if I play this on low note, I'm hearing a mixture of many harmonics of many notes uh, 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 outside of C, E, and G, because that's how it is with low strings. But that was just, you know, the nerdy explanation done fast. If you are interested, I'm going to make another tutorial about harmonics and stuff like that, but that goes into electronics. It's a bit a different thing from music. But yeah, now, what, what does that have to do with woodwinds? So, woodwinds, being a sharp instrument, being a thinner and stuff like that, they tend to have um, a way more precise frequency signal. You know, like this. This means every note I play on woodwinds is more precise. That means whenever I play a note on woodwinds, I'm creating less mud because I'm being way more precise. So rather than being this sort of blocky, very warm and very full sound, they are this sort of like laser focused note that cuts through because what we hear is the fundamental. So that gives you freedom to do stuff like crazy runs like this. Sorry, let me increase the buffer here. That gives you the freedom to do stuff like this. Because if you do this on woodwinds, and on high register especially, the notes you're playing, they're pure. They don't create those low leftover frequencies that, is, that, are, that are responsible for mud in your mix. So, you know, you can, how can you use woodwinds? You can use them to do runs like this, to do uh, trills, like uh, stuff like this. Which are just, you know, two notes, a semitone apart or an, a tone apart, depending. Like minor trills are like, while well, major. So they're like uh, two notes, one semitone apart or, or one tone apart. And if you do that, like you put, that creates a bit of tension. And a good example of that is heard in my Final Fantasy XV uh, cover of Apocalypse is Not This. Then you know, you can also do the normal things where you write melodies with your woodwinds. And again, they are going to sound more pure than they do on other instruments because of their natural sound, which means woodwinds are great if you want to layer your stuff. So for example, in this part, We have that melody on harps, but it's not sending out so much, so I added it on flute and, and piccolo. And again, as I mentioned in the tutorial, two ways to make melodies stand out in any arrangement. The melodies that really stand out are the ones on the highest tonality. 
So why do you use a melody on piccolo and a flute? And it's so sharp like that. It's going to be noticeable over, over the orchestra. Especially if in the rest of the orchestra, there aren't things, you know, as high. So yeah, you can use it like that. And uh, another example of uh, where I use woodwinds for layering or embellishment is heard in the final, like the final part of the song. So in this part, we have this happening. So in this part, we have a sort of, a, I think it's called like a God chord. And in this God chord, the French horn is doing sort of this. Okay, so I really wanted that to stand, to stand out. I don't think I layered that in the strings. So a bit, I layered it a bit in the violas, but for the most part, the cellos and stuff, they're doing something else. They are harmonizing. Now, I wanted that ba -da -ba 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 to stand out a bit more, but all the other instruments were kind of taken. They were doing their whole thing. They were you know, bringing the harmony. So what I did is I added a clarinet layering that melody. So that's a cool thing you can do. Like you can enforce, as, again, since the signal is so precise, you can enforce certain melodies by layering them with the woodwinds. And also I added these sort of grace notes here, like instead of doing ba 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 ba, I did ba 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 ba, you know, which is, it sounded a bit more realistic. And also another thing I did, uh, which I only did here, I wish, I wish I used woodwinds more in this track, but I didn't. In this final part, I wanted to create movement and create color. And that's another thing you can do. Like when, like a good example of movement, you can hear it uh, probably here in this part. Sorry, I'm gonna do this. So in this part where you have the, that big brass going and stuff like that, there's also something underneath. This. That's just harmonic movement. You know, it's just a movement. It's not the main thing. It's just a voice inside the big orchestration. And that's something I also did in the, the final part with the woodwinds and other instruments too. So, again, in the God chord part, we have this happening on the woodwinds and harps. These are just legato notes. But again, since they are so sharp and everything, they don't destroy my mix. They don't bring clutter. They are just this voice. Thing, this sort of thing. And also underneath that, we have this. A trill. And you can hear it rising in the end because I did a sort of like a this dynamics automation. So that's a way in which you can use woodwinds. Like you can write like these uh, arpeggios and runs. And by the way, if you don't know how to write runs, and with runs, I mean the things like this. So this is something I discovered while writing this track. I, you know, I heard music from Dragon Trainer, How to Train Your Dragon and stuff like that. And they had this sort of a things. And I asked myself, how the hell do they do that? Now, the answer is relatively simple. So this, there are two ways of making rounds. Actually, there's more, but I discovered two. And I used two in this track. Either you can do this, which is just doing a scale. This is just a, you know, C major scale. If I do this, you're going to notice that. You know? So a good way in which you can write a scale run is you write, you know, the scale in a very slow rhythm and stuff like that. So you can keep up with that. 
And then you take that and you stretch it. This is a function from FL Studio. So I take this, I press on this arrow, and I stretch it like this. It's just going to stretch the scale to fit into this space. So that's one way in which I can, you can write uh, the runs. Another is using patterns. So this is still the C major scale, but it's, uh, it has a pattern. So I go four notes up, one note down. Four words up, uh, notes up, one note down. So it sounds like this. And then it does C. So I wrote this with this pattern in mind. Then I stretched it like it was before. And the result is what you hear. Now, I'm not sure how complex this will be to, to play, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it works, so I'm just using it. Another thing I did is, of course, using the dynamics to, like, make this rise instead of doing this. You may want to have that dynamic. So it grows. And yeah, dynamics in general, like mod wheel, I, I use them uh, uh, everywhere, just like I did with strings and with brass. Uh, very important stuff. So you should use them too in your woodwinds. Another good example of where you can use woodwinds is heard in my Cuphead cover, where I use bassoons to create low end in the breakdown. So in this one. These guys. And I use them a lot along with uh, some uh, basses, uh, pizzicatos, I think. So that's another cool layer that can create rhythm. And I also use them here. So you can create that low end and, you know, that presence in the low end without destroying the balance because they're, you know, they just have this sound which is way more precise than the sound of a double bass. If I did this... With double bass, it would be like freaking crazy. Same thing with cello a little bit. So I did that with woodwinds. So when you want to like embellish your track with fast notes and stuff like that, woodwinds are the go-to in my opinion. Now there's advanced ways in which you can use them, which I haven't found out about, and I will make a tutorial about them in the future as long as soon as I found out those things. But if you have tips for for us, if you have a good ideas on how you can use woodwinds in a you know more professional way even let us know in the comments because we're all here to learn after all so yeah that's it for this tutorial and surely if you want to learn more about orchestral music then you must check out the Avenon course cinematic music which i'm gonna link in the description of this video and also check out the rest of my channel which is full of tutorials we're about to reach 100 videos in here so it's full of information that can be useful to you if you want to learn how to write orchestral music. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, check out the course on the description and check out the rest of my channel. And I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.